Keep in mind, these are the results of race one as well. Bow and Ingle start from row one. Lowndes and Perkins, row two. Row three, Dick Johnson with his son Stephen Johnson alongside Glenn Seaton moving up the order and Mark Scape is out of eight but he'll start from the rear of the grid after the collision with Johnson. Faulkner from 17th to 9th, Bright, Jones and Longhurst, the two teammates there, 11 and 12. Romano and Ellery, Garth Tander and Mark Larkham in the Mitre 10 forward. Further back, the wins boys, Peyton Hossack followed by top privateer Chris Merton and John Briggs. Out of 21, Jason Barguana and Mal Rose, the privateer, Anthony Tratt in the Toll Transport Board and Dean Crosswell in the Ericsson Trust Bank Commodore. Four wheel out of 25, Darcy Russell, 26, Osborne and Ryman, 27, 28. And they keep coming, Wayne Russell, Neil Crompton, Mark Poole and Terry Finnegan. John Bow has got the concentration on. And we're just looking at the telemetry on board, the Shell 18 Ford, as he lets oh, it loose. Oh, great start. Away from the start, Ingle, though, gets a tremendous run. Out of the second position, he's gunned right in front of them. Bow squeezing for room with Craig Lowndes on the inside. But the Ford will get ahead as they swing through the Scotcher complex. And the first time down the pit straight, Russell Ingle has them behind him. Good start by Russell Ingle. Bow slots nicely into second. Stephen Johnson got away to a good start too. There, the Wins boys working their way through. No carnage in the first couple this time round. It was good, clean run through. So the two that were battling it out in the first one, Ingle and Bow, but reverse positions. Now Scape has started rear of grid, so he's got a lot of work to do to come on through. Yeah, Scape had a bit of a collision oh. with uh, Stephen Johnson, one of the Wins Commodores. It's uh, Darren Hossack in trouble there. But Scape had a bit of a collision with Steve Johnson in that first heat. The officials decreed that he will keep his points from that first race. We'll have to start from the back of the grid as a tap across the knuckles. So he's got a lot of work to do, even more work to do than he had already. It's going to be interesting to see with, uh, with the two front runners. Oh. See Scape there already shuffling up through the pack. John Bow in second, Craig Lowndes in third. It's going to be interesting to see with, with Ingle and Bow now. It did look as if uh, Ingle's tyres were in better shape at the end of the uh, race than uh, Bow's were. So uh, um, it'll be interesting to see if JB can, uh, can push Ingle and then towards the end of the race if he starts to fall off the back of it. Well, Bow was saying earlier that uh, he really appreciated as well as in his interview with Mark was saying that he really appreciated Russell not taking him out. He said he fully acknowledged that Russell could have taken him out. And he said, uh, he said, I really think Russell Ingle is now starting to drive like a championship winner. Well, that, that shot right at the beginning after Bolt's interview, you saw they were bowing at that thing so was, I mean, a little baby tap would have done the trick, wouldn't it? Well, what John's done now has uh, tried to moderate the setup on the car. He went for quite an aggressive wet weather setup, and as he said, on dry tyres, it started to dry out, and it was really giving that rear rubber some murder. So what he's done is just moderate the setup so it's a little more suited to dry conditions. A lot closer this time around, the uh, leaders, Bow and Ingle, last time just bolted. Here we go. This is the view from the rear of Glenn Seaton's Ford Credit Falcon. He finished seventh in the previous one. That's where he sits at the moment. Jason Bright in the Pertec Ford behind him. Bright had a few hassles in the first one. He started fourth and drifted right back through the field. This is Seaton's telemetry on screen now, courtesy of Triple M. Speed on the left, revs on the right. And right in the middle there, bang. Brake applications, that red light there shows when he's on and off that middle pedal and he's feeling plenty of heat from the Pertec Ford of Jason Bright. So the order now, Ingle, Bow, Lowndes in third, Larry Perkins, Dick Johnson, Steve Johnson. This is the battle. Glenn Seaton and Jason Bright for seventh and eighth. Alan Jones in ninth, moving up the order in the Komatsu Ford. And Tony Longhurst, his teammate for the Castrol Falcon. I'll tell you who else is not too far out of the action is Steve Ellery in the Holden Young Lions car. He came from 19th to 14th in the first race. He's running 12th here, and he finished in the top 10 at Winton. So Ellery's coming good as the season progresses the back straight they go this big sweeper a very fast section of the circuit good to keep an eye on here bright and seaton starting to crank it up Ooh. both fords and both on bridgestone tires it's amazing you can see how hard they're pushing those stoppers 235 kilometers an hour and a virtual stop in a very short period of time the cars are really standing on their noses and it doesn't leave much room for error got a helmet cam now Lipstick camera mounted to the side of Glenn Seaton's helmet, right alongside Glenn's eyes, so you're getting a really good view of the action. So they called hangover cam. <laughs> it kind of makes you dizzy when you watch it. Just shows how brutal these cars are to ride in, how physical they are, and how when you get thrown around inside the cabin. Drivers held in by a six-point safety harness and a very tight-fitting racing capsule. But even still, the G-forces that are imposed on the body really does toss particularly the helmet around. Well, the big issue for this race, I guess, is that, as you can see, through Glenn's windscreen, totally dry. The track is dry, and we haven't had a shower here for quite a while now, so the conditions were pretty ugly at the start of the day. 
uh, getting better as we go. We see an inside move there. That was Lounge trying to go around, in fact, around the outside of John Bow. So plenty of pressure there. There's Russell Engel. He's just creeping away. And uh, as we were talking in the first race, it wasn't so much that Bow was getting the power down and getting out of that northern hairpin quicker than Russell Engel. It was when he came in there all locked up and avoided hitting Bow. He was just uh, a little too busy to get a clean run out of there. That's why uh, John was able to escape and pick up his first win here at Malala. This is the view from the back of John Bow's Shell Helix Ford looking at Craig Lowndes in the 15 Mobile One HRT car. Here's JB hard at work. Oh, look at that. Lounge very, very busy at the wheel of the Mobile One. Look how close he gets behind the Falcon as they ease out Scotch a turn. He's got plenty of speed on board. The advantage we saw with those Dunlop slick tyres and those damn conditions, well, they're reversed once it starts to get a bit dry and a little bit hotter. The Bridgestone slick seems to perform a little bit better. So Bow now is really going to have to defend. Look at the way that Mobile One Commodore is monstering the back of the shell forward. John Bow has his hands full. Craig Lowndes, the 1996 champion, hones in. Well, it's only the second time Lowndes has driven here at Malala in a V8 Super Cup. Oh. Whoa, one of the Valvoline cars. Garth Tan, no, Jason Barguana it is. In big strife over the back part of the circuit. So Barguana isn't having a happy day, and Tan had a bit of a bingle in the first one, so not a good day for the Valvoline boys. Saying earlier, the second time that Lowndes has won here, he won the first two races in 96, and he went on to win the round that year. So uh, we'll see how he goes in this one in dry conditions. He's really hassling John Bow big time and creeping in behind is Larry Perkins. Fastest man on the track too is Craig Lowndes in this one, 108-2-0. Very close to qualifying pace. Top 11 cars are under the existing lap record. Very, very fast here in Malala. Craig Lowndes proving that speed now in dry conditions. The Mobile One Commodore really getting a move on. We're keeping an eye on Mark Scope's progress too. He started off the rear of the grid and he's already up to 15th position. So Scape really had some problems in that first heat. Eruption, the oil cooler, the engine oil cooler, so he's pumping oil all over his tyres. Oh, there's another one in trouble. Front spoiler section from one of the cars. We can't see what that's off. That'd be nice collecting that, wouldn't it? Great shot. Ah, high above, Craig Lowndes just faints a little bit to the inside. Has a look down the inside of John Bow, and all the time, Larry Perkins really closing up to make it a threesome in the Castro Commodore. Great battle. Shades of Winton here, starting to uh, bunch up all nice and close. Someone else working very well, very hard, is Neil Crompton in the second Ford Credit Falcon from 30th to 16th. So Crompton's on the move along with Scaife. Well, Russell Engel, our championship leader, coming into this round. He'd be enjoying this two seconds now. He's pumped out over the lead over John Bow. He's right up. Look how close Lowndes is there as they come on past our commentary position down towards Scotcher turn once again. Larry Perkins joining in the action and Dick Johnson, rear guard for Shell AD. Looking good for Engel. He's got two and a half. What's that turn out? 2.7 seconds lead now. Yeah, so Engel out on his own. That nice clean air. No one to disturb his lap times. Let's have a look at the Shell Helix replay. Garth Tander off the inside of Alan Jones. Ah, oh, oh, Alan Jones is. front spoiler, yep. I won't be too soon, please, man. Whoa! Whoa. It's over. Just peels it off. So now Jones has no front down force. See that? Lowndes has got JB yep. up the inside. A beautiful move through Shell Sweeper. Take your eyes off oh, for somebody second. off. From Steve Reed, it was. It looked like the Lansvale car on the side. Plenty of smoke coming from underneath the bonnet as well. Not the best place to go off this. So pretty quick. It's going to be interesting to watch Craig Lowndes' lap times now that he is clear of John Bow. See whether John was holding up. Well, he's opened up two or three car lengths already. So it's going to see if Lowndes now can chase down Russell Engel. He said before he came into this round, he had to adopt a slightly less conservative approach. He has been defending a points lead, but now that Russell is in charge, he's leading the points chase, Craig says he's going to have to be far more aggressive. And he's certainly doing it here. Look at this. Have a look at the bunch behind, too, for the minor placing. Dick Johnson, his son Steve, Glenn Seaton, Jason Bright, they're all in there muscling it out. It's going to be great as this race goes on. Not even at the uh, halfway mark. Well, almost halfway now. Eight and a little bit laps down of 17, and Larry Perkins now starts to hassle John Bow. Down past the pit area. Now, uh, coming up, we've got a very busy week. Just in seven days' time, we head over to Perth, just north of Perth to the Barbagallo circuit. Now, if you'd like to uh, book tickets in advance, call that number now, 089380 You can buy your advanced tickets took in advance and uh, we'd love to see you at Barbagallo. It was a great round last year. We had three different weather conditions for the three races. A little oh, bit like today. Look how close this bunch is. This is a real great train hooked up here. Jason right at the end of it. All in a row. Val Perkins, Dick Johnson, Steve Donch and Glenn Seaton, Jason Bright. They're all hooked up. Tony Longhurst isn't far behind that battle either. 
here we are right in the thick of it. You're riding with Glenn Sig. And look at the biff in the yeah. back of the racing for life forward. Steve Johnson's been right in the wars, updating the privateers. At the bottom of your screen, you can see the battle there. Anthony Trapp, our privateer sprint winner at Winton, leading the battle at the moment. As you can see there's plenty of privateers here. Huge crowd at Malala Raceway. This afternoon to watch all the V8 action. There's plenty on here. Russell Engle building it. Now it's come down again. Craig Lowndes is in pursuit. Less than three seconds the gap between our race leader Ingle and Craig Lowndes. Lowndes has just done a quicker lap by some six tenths of a second. So the Mobile One Commodore really on a charge. Well, that damage, we saw that battle damage on the back bumper of Steve Johnson's car in front of Seaton on screen now. That was uh, the altercation with Mark Scaife. I went around to the garage and spoke to uh, the Racing for Life team manager, Lee Jeffries, and he was not a happy man. He was in the process of taping that bumper up. And uh, he, he wasn't very happy at all with that incident. We think that he spun off on the top section of the circuit. Yeah, now he finds himself back in this sandwich. After all that hard work, let's pump it out. Six seconds now. Engel, the lead over John Bell. Look at Larry oh, now the inside. Larry's and nice. Lowndes on the inside of Dick Johnson too. Oh, dear me. Oh, oh, now spun. Bell spun. Goodness me. He fries him up too as he tries to get back in the action. I don't know what happened there, but... John Bow will be furious about that. Tony Longhurst sneaks up the inside as well. Longhurst was running in 10th position, so that puts Bow right to the back of the top 10. What a difference a lap makes. Yeah, and while these guys are, are sorting it out amongst themselves, Mark Scaife, just having a look out the commentary box window, is reeling these guys in so quickly, it's a joke. He is just hauling them in. Well, he's right up behind John Bow, who just spun, so Bow's got Scaife behind him. He's going to try and pass Tony Longhurst. Here's the battle here. There he is, back behind Bow. Mark Scaife into the action from right back of the grid. So Bow finds himself back in 10th Jeez. position, Scaife in 11. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. What a topsy-turvy day. This will hurt John Bow because he was really concentrating on building a big points buffer today to hold himself right in this championship. Came into this round third in championship points, 424 to Ingalls, 504. And maximum points in heat one, but this one will hurt him a little bit. Two big winners out of that situation over the back part of this Malala circuit. Dick Johnson and Glenn Seaton. Have a look at the replay here on the inside. That's Larry Perkins. Oh, just locks it up. Larry. Oh, there so we go. Yeah. Perkins tap, taps the back of 18. Now there's another battle going on there. Lowndes and Dick Johnson trying to take evasive <laughs> action. He gets a little shave from the side of Lowndes. Now, Stephen Johnson's trying to follow them all through. Good to see what See Cito? Jam. Through goes Seaton and Bright. They were very big winners out of that. Let's look at that again. Yeah. So there's real bumper-to-bumper -bumper stuff here. Oh, look at this lot. <laughs> so it's all happening at Malala. <laughs> Mark Scaife finds himself right back in the battle behind John Bow, our first heat winner. Well, that's certainly helped, hasn't it? He's the man who we saw spinning, John Bow. Went from in the top three, now he's right back in. Now he's spun again, apparently. We've just got word. And we've just heard from race control that Larry Perkins is about to cop a stop-go penalty oh, for that little incident. So uh, the Perkins garage might be one to go hang around after this race. He'll be oh, happy, is, won't he? To get the quotes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it but Larry's going to be steaming. There's smoke coming from the back of uh, the right-hand side rear of uh, Scaife's car. So it's um, obviously um, coming together somewhere there. There'll be smoke coming from the ears of Larry Perkins when he gets that message too, Baz, I can guarantee you. So John Bow continues to claw his way back into the top ten. Where's he running now? He's had another spin, 14. so he's back in 14th position. <laughs> oh, after battling, finding himself in second position in the opening match. It's amazing how it can turn around. All right, let's update it. This is the way it sits at the moment. Ingle Johnson with five laps to go. Dick, that is. Glenn Seaton third. Larry Perkins was in fourth. He has to come in for that stop go. Bright, Steve Johnson, Faulkner, Longhurst and Scaife in the top ten. Well, the surprise man out of that would have to be Glenn Seaton. Wouldn't yeah, it? he's <laughs> laughing. He is absolutely laughing. And Larry Perkins has just come into his stop-go penalty. You can just see him. There he is, just in the back of shot, coming into the pit entry. We might just hear him moaning on the way out of the pit. <laughs> There's the Castrol Commodore, number 11, stop-go penalty. He'll move down to the official area allocated for this process, which will just be here. See the red lollipop? Come to a complete stop. And he's back in the action. <laughs> and he smokes him up too. But that finds... Uh, once we've got Mark Larkham, I think, just went through picture there. He's running back in 11. So that should put Larry about 13th on the track. And Larkham should go up inside the top ten, so too will Scaife. Now, it's a day of firsts here at Malala because we're making a bit of a song and dance earlier about John Bow and how it was his very first win here at Malala. Russell Ingle has never won a race at this circuit before. He calls it his home race in front of his home crowd. It's not his home track. That's Winton. 
But it's going to be a very special moment for Russell Ingle as well, and it's certainly going to help him in his championship points. Came into this round with just the four points over Craig Lowndes, and it's going to extend after Lowndes has had not such a good race this one. Russell is on fire. Can you believe it? It's almost an eight-second lead now to Russell Ingle. He's got this one home and home, so long as everything sits steady with four laps left to run as Lowndes muscles Seaton big time. Well, Glenn will be enjoying this, the most competitive outing he's had for a while. It's been a very topsy-turvy season. Third at Sandown, seventh at Simmons. He was right back in 21st position at Lakeside. Fourth at Phillip Island. Went in another disappointing round. Only 11th overall, so it hasn't been the best of seasons for him. And now he feels the pressure from the number one Commodore as they come up through the shell curve side by side at 230 kilometres an hour. And Lowndes leaves him standing. Well, Craig Lowndes is clawing his way back beautifully. He drifted back. He made a little mistake. We didn't see it. None of us saw it, in fact. Well, another oh. stop-go. Can you believe it for Larry? We've just got word he has to do another stop-go penalty for speeding in pit lane. I've got to hear this after. Wow. <laughs> you want to go and talk to him, Bass? No, 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 it's all right. We've got to hear from him. <laughs> he's yeah. great. In a situation like this, he's wonderful to listen to, Larry Perkins. He comes out with some amazing one lines. Like Glenn Seaton, Craig Lowndes just went past him, gangbusters, three laps to go. Let him run right up there as he attacks the back of the Shell 17 Ford. Good consistent run for Dick Johnson at Malala Raceway this afternoon. So let's just recap. Russell Engel, he's seven seconds up the road from Dick Johnson and Craig Lowndes. Another second back to Glenn Seaton, then it's Bright Faulkner, Stephen Johnson, Tony Longhurst, Mark Scape up into the top ten, and Jason Bargrana in tenth position. Look at the amount of muscle. Lowndes is putting on the Shell 17 Ford here as they head up the back straight once again. We just saw Lowndes fly past Glenn Seaton on the previous lap. Let's see if he can do the same to Johnson as they come under brakes. Here come Larry comes Perkins. back into the pits. This is his second stop go in succession. <laughs> this one apparently for speeding in pit lane. As he blasts out of pits, he would be so angry. He'd be very disappointed about that. We uh, were watching Lowndes really hassle Dick Johnson. They're coming through some slower traffic as Perkins makes his way back out on the circuit. Here's Lowndes now. Look at this. Right up under brakes. We're running out of time. Just two and a bit laps left to run. Lowndes wants to get back up into second where he was. He's flying. He's uh, 0.7 of a so well, 17ths of a second quicker than DJ that last time. It's a lot. Yeah, he's one of the fastest, probably the fastest car on the track at the moment. He's really making inroads here. But Johnson, he can prove a tough customer. They've got a bit of traffic coming up here. Maybe the opportunity Lowndes is looking for. But Johnson may equally use it to his advantage. Fascinating battle as these final laps unfold. Less than two laps remaining. Just making their way past Danny Osborne in the colour scan Falcon, Craig Lowndes. And we saw this is where he blasted by Glenn Seaton. Can he do it this time? There's some traffic up ahead. Lowndes, he's showing that he is so quick out on the circuit at the moment. This Mobile One HRT Commodore, he tries the outside line this time. Coming up on Wayne Russell though. Now he'll tuck in behind, get the draft again. Dick's got the nice inside defensive line. Now let's hope Wayne Russell gives him plenty of room, which he does, well done. But Craig Lowell sneaks up the inside of Russell, trying every trick he knows, and he'd be very much aware, guys, that this championship battle, you can win or lose a championship by one point. Every point he can get here, absolutely critical. We run on the back of Dick Johnson's car yet again. Now, Dick's got Whoa. a fair share of damage on this. He's been involved in quite a bit. We have got one lap left to run. Ingle has just crossed the start-finish line. He is absolutely cruising. In fact, he's backing off. That gap's come back. I don't think it's that these guys are catching him. It's that uh, he's just cruising around. We're going to stay with this one, though. This is where the action's at. Speaking of action, there's going to be plenty of it up in the Northern Territory. There's the number to ring to uh, inquire about your holiday and trip up to Hinton Valley. It should be great. Well, HL not weary of them. Dick Johnson, 50-plus. Yeah, Craig Lowndes, a guy in his early 20s. Look at the performance of Johnson in this car. He's an absolute tiger. He's got battle damage all the way up and down the side of the car. And look at this one <laughs> final time for Craig Lowndes. You can't get any closer than that. That's right. You reckon Dick's going to take the inside line into this corner or what? Yeah, he could be right there. <laughs> <laughs> got a bit of traffic coming up here. He ducks across to cover his ground. Breaking right up the middle of the road. Lowndes looking for the fast way around. He's going to go around the outside unless Johnson makes a mistake. And he's going to try up the outside wow. too as they come through. Pacific waist turn. You can see him hogging that inside wheel up. Maximum cornering effort. Or break hard. Now the end of the back straight into Bridgestone for the final time. Lowndes has a look around the outside, but Johnson well positioned to defend. Well, Dick Johnson is holding Craig Lowndes at bay while Russell Ingle grabs his very first win at Malala here in South Australia. He's happy too. He's so satisfied with that one. Across the line comes Dick Johnson in for second. A great battle there. 
He held Lowndes to that third spot from Seaton Bright and John Faulkner in for another very good run. But here's the guy who is so delighted with his win. The very first at Malala. And he keeps that unbelievable record going from 15 starts his last 15 starts he has finished on the podium every single time how about the consistency of this guy this year John Bauer managed to climb his way back into 12th position after all that and he will not be a happy jabby after running second in the opening laps tell you one of the big movers Mark and Barry too was Neil Crompton he went from 30th to 13th it's a great effort as the South Australian now Melbourneite brings it round the fist out the window. He got the win from Dick Johnson, Lounge, Seaton and Bright, as we said earlier. We go six back through ten. Well done, John Faulkner and Steve Johnson. Scaife, what a drive from the back of the grid to eight. Longhurst and Marguana rounds out the top ten.